Hello again. We're going to start graphing square root functions. And a good precursor to that is talking about the quadratic functions, the ones that look like u's, the ones we've been doing for quite a while with factoring, square roots, etc. So we got this function, f of x equals x squared. But you can think about it if it makes more sense to you as y equals x squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to invert the x and the y. There is actually no inverse function for this, but it's a good precursing step to kind of explain the theory of what's going on. So basically what I want to do is I just want to replace the x and the y with each other, or just move spots. So what I get is x equals y squared, but I'm still going to be solving for the y. So when I do that, I've got to take the square root of both sides to get y by itself. And when I take the square root of both sides, I've got to account for the good and the bad. Now the problem with this is this. If I graph this on a number line, if I graph this one, and if I graph this one on a number line, I'm going to start with y equals x squared because that's something we're familiar with. It looks something like this, where its domain is negative infinity to infinity, its range is zero to infinity. It kind of expands out like this, and it's a function because it's moving forward. I mean, it's kind of going like this. Um, when I graph this bad boy right here, it looks like this, except instead of uh, surrounding the y-axis, it kind of hugs the x-axis. Now the problem is that's not a function, and if you uh, go back to any video lessons, or if you know what a function is, it has to pass something called the vertical line test. Basically, you can do that by looking at a graph or looking at tables. But if you draw a vertical line through a graph, it's only supposed to hit one point. Now, uh, pic uh, picture representation means, well, I already hit two, so that's not going to work. Or you can look at a table. If it's got um, an x value and two different y values for that same x value, it's also not a function, or more than one. Uh, y value for any particular x value. So what we do in math is we don't focus on the negative aspect, we only focus on the positive aspect. And that way we can still graph these and we can call them functions. So technically it's not the inverse, but that's how you go about trying to figure it out. Now that's the relationship uh, that a square root function, um, excuse me, a square root function takes without the negative, only the positive. It, it goes up kind of slowly like this, no, not too fast, but it's always going up, uh, albeit not as fast as you'd like it to be, but kind of, you know, raises gently, 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 and keeps going. That's the nature of what we're going to be doing today, and I'm going to start by doing that with tables. We'll, we're going to be talking about domain and range, which are actually very fascinating, with uh, these kind of graphs. Y equals the square root of X, or if you want to be more technical, You can say f of x equals square root of x. y and f of x is basically the same thing. So with that said, we're going to get to some graphing with some tables, which should be pretty fascinating. But I thought that was a very good introductory lesson into why we even do it in the first place. And when you get into more complex math, what we start doing is we start taking inverses of certain graphs, especially in trig. Uh, when we're doing uh, exponential functions, we take its logarithmic function, and so on and so forth. So we've been doing lines and quadratics, and we did an exponential function. Now we're going to kind of delve into something that gets into more advanced graphing. Uh, not always very liked, but as long as you kind of just follow the steps of what you're supposed to do, it's not too bad. Uh, with that said, we'll get back to graphing in our next lesson. So have a good day for now. Goodbye.